which is good good people so uh okay here we have this is this is like ooh yeah this this is some amazing stuff here this is uh Marty Leeds and James True and uh Right as I was introduced to James True through Genevieve, shout out to Genevieve, um, I messaged her, messaged her and was like, dude, this guy reminds me of Marty. <laughs> and uh, wow, wouldn't you know it, here they are together. <laughs> Fucking epic. And, and this was awesome. I'm, I'm going to share a link uh, to this. Because I uh, highly, highly recommend this. Um, for anyone who is interested in uh, Freemasonry or uh, deeper level engagements of Gnosis, it goes well beyond Freemasonry and it goes absolutely into the codings and the matrix of uh, the, the language, the, the imagery that has been set up for you. And then uh, this, the, yes, a little bit about the spells and spellings, but how to detangle them into um, not just mathematics, because mathematics is another uh, ideology mentality that you've been led to believe is something uh, certain, specific. But really, um, what what that is uh, trying to express to you is is a flow state. It's, it's a flow of the Fibonacci. And, Golden Ratio and uh, Phi and how this is uh, so so it's, it's it's trying to show you a design and so this is what we're going to get into here about um, the, the the fundament the, the cornerstone of uh, Freemasonry or just Masonic um teachings is to uh, basically initiate people into this uh, understanding so yeah here we go that we wouldn't even speak the same language, yet we could get a project done. Why? Because we were speaking the same language, and it was math. Now, why are the Masons, so Masonry is an allegory towards building, and that's why they have the compasses and square, because they're pointing to a universal mathematical language. You know, that's a language that's universal. And so that's what Masonry is all about. Not if you go online, though. Not if you go to all, you know, everybody from everybody across the spectrum. It's a sex cult, it's, a, it's this, it's the Jesuits, it's masonry is Judaism, Judaism is masonry, it's this. It's wild, wild speculations, as opposed to just going right to the meat and potatoes of what the Masons say themselves and say, well, maybe I should just read that, and then maybe we could take that seriously, or, you know, that just hardly ever happens, you know. So that is my biggest pitch. Now, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to rant too much, but the reason that I'm so protective of it, and the reason, and I'm not a Mason, I'm not a Freemason at all, um, I have no intention of joining. I though I did try joining here, but the lodge is closed. It closed the lodge on the island. So that's <laughs> but the reason I'm so protective of it is because years of reading Masonic literature actually led me to the Bible. And that's what you will read in Masonic. If, once again, you read everything from Steinmetz to Mackey to, I just read Pike. <laughs> Pike was like, yes, it's the savior who was the infant that the Magi came to announce the, you know, the new word. And they, Pike himself is saying, go to Christianity. So I would read Masonry. I would read every from Mackey to Steinmetz to Ward to Pike to everybody. And they'd be like, well, the mystery is continued on through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. Again and again, for years, years, that's what I read. And so I'm like, and whenever you look at that from the outside looking in, uh, you, 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 you know, you're going to see something different. And as he will, you know, uh, say uh, shortly here is, you have to look at for, look at it from a new vantage point, a new perspective, a new set of eyes, and then you see something completely different. So uh, there is an encoding that happened. 
Um, and this is, ooh, I don't know how deep we'll get into this, but this is the true uh, essence of uh, Jesus Christ is a deeper level encoding. The true essence, the original, the origin of Jesus Christ is witnessing a manipulation happening upon people. At that time, it was a specific people. And this, you could say person, it's the same thing as saying an ideology, a mentality, manifesting to take the occulted. It, it was an occulted people to take this occulted people and take it upon this mentality, this, this personification of this mentality to bring these people back into some kind of form of sanity. And so a system was set up to dissolve the occulted corruption and inversion and perversion So, uh, if if you get into you know the, the teachings of Freemasonry, whenever they're telling you to go to the teachings of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I for a long time, like I, any time I heard the the words Lord or Savior, um, the imagery will both pop up for me. The ideology of uh, servitude and so I was like fuck no fuck that but whenever you're able to look at it with different vantage point a different perspective um, how to break down the words into something else you realize uh, hey maybe there were encodings here And this is absolutely the case. Uh, highly recommend Marty Leeds. Because he breaks all of this down with how the encodings in the Bible translate directly to the encodings in the human form. And not just that, but just just how fucking special the human form is. It's not a happenstance. It's not, you know, a coincidence of evolution that, that the human form was brought about. Okay, well, and that's what actually led me to go to the Bible and study. I'm like, okay, well, they're, they, they're, they keep telling me to go here. I guess I got to go back to the Bible. I, I, I put it away 20 years ago or 15 years ago, whatever it was. But there, but Mason was like, no, 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 you got to go back. You got to go back and relook. You got to relook with new eyes, you know? Exactly. So <clears throat> when I continue to hear people rip on it and stuff like that and actually misrepresent what the Masons themselves are saying and some of these absolutely brilliant authors and mystics are saying, it's like, in one sense, it's really close to my heart because it's like, I know that the Freemasonic square encompasses, and I could talk about it for days, man, days, that that is a symbol of Lord Jesus Christ. I, you want to talk about it, Lord Jesus Christ absolutely squares the circle. Absolutely is a representation of the, 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 the number seven in the creation of the world, which is the letter G. It's absolutely a recognition that there's uh, there's sound within creation because what is G? It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Right. So now we're getting into creation and you say the sound in creation, but really it's, it, you know, that, that goes back into the word of God. Um, the, the vibration that, that was the 
start of creation and you know uh, we have to get into uh, how reality comes about it, it, beco it comes first from the image so um, before the word of God it had to be an idea an image and that was spoken or reverberated or sung about you can even liken it to the big bang it was a big word it, it was it was a big outpouring of this idea into manifestation and that is the vibration that is continuing to basically keep this uh, matrix, this system that we are living within, alive. So you have to get into like what co-creation is, because you're you're not just creating, you're, you're creating within something, but also beyond it. Because, uh, and if you want to think about it like a uh, parent and child, any any parent that is like in, with pure intent wants not just the best for their child, but they want their child to become more than them. This is absolutely the case. If if you want to think about it in creator created sense, so the limitations, and you hear people talk about how we're limited uh, within either these bodies or whatever. The limitations is always going to come back down to the mind. What the the belief systems, uh, what you the the agreements, what you agree with, you limit yourself with what you agree with in your belief systems. There's sound, there's all of that there, just a great mystery that's wrapped up in one symbol, and people see it and they're like, oh, that's a silly, I have sex with kids down at the lodge. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So, like, I have to come out bold and be like, no, no, absolutely not. And I just have to, and I have to be bold because I'm like, not on my watch. You're not going to misrepresent and, and, and trash on something that has led me directly to Jesus Christ to allow me to understand the science of the Bible. So that's, that's where I come from. So that's why, you know. And, and just real quick here, I want to interject and say, you know, that that's where, you know, hardcore fundamentalist, uh, whatever kind of religion, Christians, whatever, come from. Not on my watch. And that's why I'm a little bit uh, wary with, with people that say that. Because it's... I mean, not not necessarily with Marty Leeds, because I know he knows his shit. But, and I also know that in saying that, he recognizes what I'm about to say, which is that, uh, on the flip side, people that are so hardcore in, in a certain ideology, like who have spent years encapsulated within a certain ideology or religion or mentality, will have that same stance and vantage point of not on my watch. And, and I have direct uh, interactions with, with these kinds of people. Um, and it's always, you always come to a certain wall uh, where they will not cross. They will come to their uh, stance where they stand and they will keep reverberating regurgitating the same thing over and over and they will not pass that this is this is a big part of why I am sharing this uh, right now and in a message that I want to share is go beyond your walls you may think you have a lot of stuff figured out you may think you have it all figured out probably not if you're li listening to this because I don't attract people uh, that think they have it all figured out. But 
realize your your vantage points and your perspectives and that those can always be shifted and changed and there's no good or bad there just is so it's not going to be a bad thing for you to look into things in a certain in a different way in a different perspective or vantage point so a lot of people are triggered by Marty Leeds and I imagine with James True as well so I recommend continue to listen continue to feel the message because this is This is a message not just of the symbology and the uh, occulted nature of the world, but it's tying it back into you, specifically, specifically back into you, and just how amazing the creation of you is, uh, the creation of the human form of just form in general nature when I, I messaged you I was like oh dude I felt bad I'm like this guy doesn't know where I'm coming from <laughs> it's like you know he's just trying to be a nice guy here I am just like but you know as I told you it's a decade of hearing this and at this point, I'm just standing up. I'm like, no, no longer. I'm not listening to this. Yeah, you well, know. that's that's why I wrote to you and said, look, as long as you understand, I I don't think you. Maybe you're seeing how I how I see Freemasonry because I I don't see it as a uh, a sex cult in any way. <laughs> I I do think that, which is refreshing to hear. That I, I do think that that there is definitely some some. Uh, Masonic ritual, I'll just use that word, in, deep inside of NASA, and, and that there are some some um, people that they utilize the single... And I'm pretty sure he was just using NASA as an example, because really, um, it's everywhere. It, it, it is Hollywood, it is the media. They use these coatings, and you could call it Masonic, because it These teachings have been corrupted, and it's not just masonry or Freemasonry, whatever you want to term it as. Um, it's it's these deeper level encodings. Freemason Freemasonry or masonry is pointing you towards these encodings that that move well beyond Freemasonry. It moves into the beyond ideology it's just it moves into the cymatics of frequency and reverberation and uh spellings uh letters why certain words are used why certain frequencies are used how that ties back into a certain uh numerical value how it ties back into gematria So these things are, and this is, they also talk about uh, the corruption, like, you know, this is always going to be the case whenever something arises, you know, people that are fucked in the mind are going to seek to corrupt it. I won't, I won't go too deep into it because um, it's going to, that's going to discredit everything I've said and shared here so I'm not going to do that because that I mean it's just going to be basically saying that this was all a setup every single part of this was but but what I love about what, what James True said is maybe that was needed you know maybe maybe we needed that to help people uh, realize 
that they actually are fucking enslaved. Which I think I'll get into, like, what what he's going to say with, with chains and, and stuff. Which he said before Marty came in, and he said it a little bit more fluidly and eloquently than, than what he's going to share here. But you'll, you'll get the gist of it, and that's absolutely the case. And this ties back into, uh, this is why I wanted also, why I was led to make this, is just the synchronicities of it. Um, what I just talked to someone about with this, and like, because... What they kept telling me, and I, I, we were talking about um, the mini, Minneapolis fucking shit. Uh, and I was, I was basically telling him that, you know, I was sharing things with him to make it pretty blatantly obvious that it was a setup. That it was designed to be orchestrated in, in a certain manner. And so his response uh, not, wasn't wasn't just well it wasn't I don't think that's true it was well what do we do about it what can we do we got to do something it's like okay like those, these are you know good inquiries to have but um, we have to realize the roots this is what we do about it is that we keep diving into where it stemmed from because otherwise we're going to be pecking at the fucking uh f things that have been sprouting up from these corrupted roots and if you if you're not digging up the roots they're just going to keep coming back up over and over century after century this has been the case so now these roots are finally being dug up And uh, we are in for a fucking ride, people. So tighten your seatbelts. Hold on to your asses. This is going to get good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's already it's already beautiful. It's, it's always been beautiful. But uh, the beautiful part is that you have the choice to make it whatever the fuck you want to make it. That's the beauty of it. You can see that people, some, you know, a lot, a lot of people are actually waking up because of this, or you can see that, or you can get caught up in it. And oh my God, this is terrible! Oh my God, we're in a pandemic, and oh, people are rioting. Ah, oh, we need, we need people to come in and help us because we can't think for ourselves. So yeah, I'll share a little bit more of this, and he'll get into like uh, the the fucking basically what it's about here, and then I'll draw a card, and that will be that will be that. Criticism of masonry as a spellcraft to uh, pull off massive psyops that may or may not be used to better the good of people. Actually, uh, it's it's this is a whole other thing that that we've been talking about a lot in my channels that. I, I can show you. In fact, I opened it with a quote today that yeah. um, if if, free, if, uh, if Albert Pike was to come and remove your chains, you would accuse him of stealing something from you. He, he, he liberated you. If you didn't accuse him of stealing your chains, you would then follow him home and you would say, well, you're going to take care of me now. You, you're my liberator. And someone like Albert Pike would say, no, I can't be your liberator. You have to liberate yourself. And the only. So basically, <laughs> before this, uh, how he explained that was that, you know, people are either going to see it as, hey, you took something from me, like you're, you're doing something upon me, and then you don't know, have a reaction to that, and then go against it, or. They are going to put you on a pedestal. You are the hero, and then and then keep coming back to you for the answer. And this is something I experienced at a very very fucking young age. So um, I got it um, at least on a, uh, a subconscious level. Like it was ingrained in me very quickly. Hey, you can't you can't show people what the fuck you're about because it 
At least not not where I'm at right now. And you, we have to be in certain uh, places in order to do that. Because if I do that right here and now, um, I'm going to have everything, my, my humanity and my persona raped and taken from me. That was made clear on, at a s severely young age. Very, very young age. Because I was very artistic. And so I was, it was made clear to me that anything um, of my mind and artistry that was going to come out of me was going to be taken and manipulated and raped. That was made clear at a very young age. Now, it was up to me how I choose to see that. Did, did I choose? Did, did I choose? Rather. To see that in a way where it was suppressive or, and at the time, and probably for many years later, yes, but then eventually I, I gained the re recognition that that was, that needed to happen because until I was strong enough and aware enough grounded enough, integrated enough, had transmuted enough to uh, not just, it's not about control, but it's about controlling where the flow of my artistry went. Until that happened, you know, I needed to back off. So this is what this is what he's going to be like getting at here is that, you know, maybe some of the stuff was needed for people to wake up. Which I don't totally agree with, but um considering, you know, everything that's going on, like in and, and what's happening like I'm witnessing people waking up from these from this stuff. Like this is a catalyst. Like these things that are happening right now um, is, is are catalysts for people to wake up. And I, I keep being very very surprised each time um, another level um, happens. So first it was the, the the fucking pandemic, and I was surprised, not necessarily with the speed of which what, how people woke up, but but just the people that I I wouldn't have thought would have saw um, into it and through it, that surprised me. And then the next level was the rioting, and that was like almost instantaneous. So that that was a uh, yeah. I was I was very I wasn't necessarily surprised, but just uh, very very pleased. That that it was happening so quick. So, and and as I as, as I have been saying throughout my videos, if if you have listened to any of them, is that um, these these things are being turned in upon themselves and being used as catalysts for growth. And this is we're witnessing this in real time right now. that I can liberate you is by actually using um, deceit and mystery to spur you to find your own truth. In fact, that's why he, he speaks that the, the certain blue people in the lodge, the, the blue labels basically are, are lied to. Again, it, it's, it, it, hear me out, it's no different than a karate instructor uh, doing a foot swipe and knocking you on your ass. It, it's, he's going to keep doing that because that's what's necessary for you to progress to the next level. If, if, if he was not to do that, you would just turn around and either praise him or accuse him of being the either savior or the uh, enslaver of you. So, Freemason... That's fucking beautiful. So not not only Freemason, but like this this applies in so many aspects of life. And like, like I uh, began this, like this is the essence of Jesus... Uh, of the uh, the 
um, the origin of Jesus, which was to approach this occulted world in a manner where it flips it in on itself and makes people question why they believe what they believe. And then, and then eventually, maybe, just start to think for themselves. So, like, I you know, people talk about the resurrection or the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is this is now, right now. And, and it's a mentality, it's an ideology that's happening, and it's being personified in so many uh, different areas and avenues of people because of this. It, it's it's an energy. That's happening. Where people are beginning to question it and de de occult the nature of the reality they have that they have been led to, into. And I know a lot of you have already done your own de occulting of your own mentality and reality. But for the for the mass majority of people, they are heavily spellbound and occulted so people like this are so fucking necessary in helping to dispel and disenchant the corrupted enchantments this this is the resurrection okay you are the resurrection if you hear this and feel this and integrate this on any kind of level and begin to question and think for yourself. This goes well beyond all religions, but this ties into everything. So yeah, I'll share this card that I drew. Which I'm pretty sure I've drew it before, but hey, we'll go ahead and share it because it's good. And it ties back into a lot of stuff. Um, the imagery there. Um, with the crescent and the cross and the pyramids. Um, man and imagery and uh, being held and balanced. And then the pyramids. Uh, the hierar hierarchy. The... Uh, the dog head, the seriousness of the comedic relief, the Anubis. Because uh, with, with this, <laughs> this level, um, this current cycle, of this occulted uh, world, um, so with with our memory that we have right now, um, it began in Egypt, but but truly, you know, it began long before that. But but for the memory that we have right now, it began in Egypt. And I will definitely, you will definitely be hearing from me. And uh, from from other people about how this monopoly system began. Judgment. Anubis, jackal-headed god of the Egyptian underworld, looms over a crowd 
of waiting souls. Each will have their moment of reckoning, their lives measured against his feather of truth. This card's appearance signifies that you are ripe for transformation. You stand at the threshold of a great change, yet this change awaits something before it can happen. Maybe a crucial decision on your part, or the arrival of a piece of important information. You may also need to reckon with your past before you are truly ready to move on. Judgment calls on you to open your eyes to a whole new way of looking at life. To move into an awareness of something bigger. You have the potential now to be reborn into a more meaningful existence. Will you heed this call to awaken? And like I mentioned previously, we, we can get into this stuff, we, we can de-occult our world, but I mean, it doesn't end there. We have to move beyond that. So flow into this stuff, like flow into the rabbit hole, but go out of it as well. Flow out of it. And that, that's fine to flow in and out. But don't get stuck in an eddy or a loop program. Find your currency, your current, and see beyond that. Peace.